We are in story number 274. Uh, Jesus is sent to Herod. So, what have we seen? We've seen the Last Supper. We saw Jesus um, at the Garden of Gethsemane. We saw Judas come and he did what? Betrayed Jesus with a what? With the kiss. Mm -hmm. We've seen Jesus arrested and, and uh, carted off to the authorities. What kind of authorities initially did he go, go to? The what? The religious authorities. Mm -hmm. And this is where when you read the scripture and you begin to realize that the most corrupt people that we deal with in scripture are people that have religious titles. Ain't that a shame? Religious titles, people that have religious uh, 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 aspects behind them, these were the, the Jewish uh, 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 synagogue leaders, the, the religious theologians of their day. So m misconceptions about what Jesus is and what he was doing brought about their envy and their malice against Jesus. Not atheists. Not the people that are away from, but it was ch folks that were talking about, you know, I'm, the, I'm part of the God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob when they weren't. So then, but they were not able to do what Jesus, to do, do to Jesus what they wanted to, which was to do what? Put him to death. Because they were, they are now under Roman authority. And they didn't have the right to put anybody to death. So in order to get Jesus put to death like they wanted, they had to go where? To the government. Oh, look at that. Religious authority and government working together. Mm -hmm. right. well, I ain't going to bother that. I'll let you handle that one. You can come to your own conclusion on, on what you have seen throughout history when you see religion and government coming together. But to get back to the point, so we see that, and we saw that, him, that, that Jesus was eventually brought to Pilate. That's what we looked at last week. And Pilate was questioning Jesus and asked Jesus a couple of questions and wanted to know, are you king of the Jews? And Jesus said, I am. Uh, Jesus also told Pilate one of the most, I think one of the most important things that we see in scripture. And he told him, for this reason came I into the world that I might bear witness to the what? To the, the truth. truth. And that is important because if Jesus had to come, he said, the, the, the reason I came was so I could bear witness to the truth. That's the purpose that he came. That means that he's coming to correct the what? The wrong. Right, but let's use the, the lie. The lie. Mm -hmm. So that means that in this world we've been what? Lied to. <laughs> continuously. We lie to all the time. Who's the prince and power of this world right the now? Devil. The devil. And he is the father of what? Lies. lies. So we're lied to all the time. Whether you pick up on it or acknowledge it or even are aware of it is, has a lot to do with your, your focus, your, de your determination to know spiritual truth. Because as you desire to know the spiritual truth, guess what? You're going to be awakened to all this different stuff that we see. And we're lied to all the time in, on TV and magazine and books. Uh, a lot of uh, organizations that say that they have certain things that they're doing for your benefit when in reality they're only thinking about what, what they can get. So you have to be aware of that. And sometimes it takes a maturity aspect of being aware about society. More importantly, it takes a spiritual awareness to be able to look at the motive and the, and the reason for why people do things. Uh, we'd be surprised as to you know, people that look good uh, but then truly have their own agenda. Jesus points this out once again when he talks about those that will come to him and say, Lord, haven't we done cast out devils and, 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 and did all these wonderful works in your name. And Jesus will say to them, depart from me, you worker of iniquity, what? I never knew you. So we got to keep that in mind too. So he comes to bring us the what? The truth. And he tried to explain that to Pilate. And Pilate's answer to that was, what is truth? He kind of just said, you know, what is truth? All right. And so he went back out and he, and he told them that this man is innocent, but they didn't want to hear it. So now Pilate's in a, in a dilemma because Pilate is, is a government official. He's a politician. Mm -hmm. And the one thing that politicians don't want is to have bad favor. That happens even today. All right? So he's trying to make things go smooth because he's trying to keep his job. All right? 
And so what we see now is where we're at now, where uh, uh, the pilot is trying to find out what he can do with this situation to make himself look good and not to have a, a, a major issue going on in his jurisdiction. And look and see what happens here. So let's go into story 274. Let's take a, a listen to this. Story 274. Jesus is sent to Herod. But they kept on insisting, saying, He stirs up the people, teaching all over Judea, starting from Galilee, even as far as this place. And hearing Galilee, Pilate questioned if the man was a Galilean. And knowing that he was from the jurisdiction of Herod, he sent him back to Herod, he also being in Jerusalem in those days. And seeing Jesus, Herod rejoiced exceedingly, for he was wishing for a long time to see him, because he heard many things about him, and he was hoping to see some sign done by him. And he was questioning him with many words, and he did not answer him. And the chief priests and the scribes stood there, vehemently accusing him and humiliating him. Herod with his soldiers mocked him, and putting gorgeous apparel around him, sent him back to Pilate. And both Pilate and Herod became friends with one another on that day, for before they were at enmity between themselves. All right. So now we see this. Keeping in mind that we're watching the progression. Jesus is dealing with what he came to deal with. He's, up, he's about to make that payment. All right? And we drew the analogy. Right? When you go in the grocery store, right? We said, what? You can get all your groceries together, but at a certain point in time, you got to get on what? That line to do what? To, pay. to make the payment. If you get your groceries together and you just walk out the door, guess what's going to happen? You're going to be in trouble. And we said, even sometimes you get, to, you get your stuff together, you get online and you get there and then you realize... That you don't have enough what? Enough money. money. Sometimes you forgot your wallet or what? Either way, the only way to legitimately get your groceries out of that store is you got to have the proper amount of what? Money, money to pay. The right currency. So you can have you can have three four hundred dollars on you, and your groceries could be two or three hundred dollars. But if it's three or four hundred dollars of monopoly money, mm -hmm. that's not going to work. So it has to be the money that's authorized by that which will say, I recognize that as proper payment. Which is why our good works won't pay for our sin. Our good works are not proper currency to pay for sin. Sometimes we think, well, all I'm going to do, I'm going to be a better person and then I'm going to go to heaven. Well, being a better person is a good agenda. I, I applaud that. I think you, everybody should try to be better. But being a better person is not going to get you to heaven. Amen. Being a better person, you know what's going to get you? Being a better person. Mm -hmm. That's what it's going to get you. Being nice in this world is, going to be, is about as valuable as monopoly money in the monopoly game. When it's in the game, it's valuable. But outside of the game, it has no power. Your good works on this earth is good for, for you know, it's nice. You can build friends and, 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 and acquaintances and get along with folks and, and have good times. That's what goodness and kindness and all that will get you. But it will not deal with your sin. Mm. To deal with your sin, you need, to, you need to have payment from a perfect person. And that's what Jesus is doing here. He is beginning this payment. So, it says, uh, but they kept insisting. So who was they? That's the, the religious leaders, the scribes and the Pharisees. They kept insisting, saying... He stirs up the people because Pilate had one. He came out and told these folks, and I don't see no, I don't see no guilt in this guy. But the Pharisees were like, no, nah, no, nah, he's a problem. He, they, he stirred up the people, teaching all over uh, Judea, stirring up in Galilee. And so when they said that he was stirring up folks in Judea and in Galilee, Pilate is like, oh, wait a minute. And it says, and hearing... Pilate questioned if the man was a Galilean. Uh, and knowing that he was from the jurisdiction of Herod, he sent him back to Herod. So what was Pilate looking for? Pilate is, once again, he's a politician. What is he trying to do? Avoid the problem. Pilate was not concerned about the truth that Jesus was talking about. 
Pilate was concerned about his what? His political status. So in other words, Pilate wasn't trying to fix the problem. He was trying to do what? Avoid him. Keep his, little, his status. Aren't you glad the politicians don't do that today? Oh, oh, do, oh do that. So they don't really care about whether you, 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 you struggle. They don't really care whether you, you uh, have bad schools. They don't really care whether you know, you're paying more taxes than you should. So they don't really care about that unless it's going to make them look what? Good, good. Okay. All right, so when we think it, when we see that today, don't be discouraged in the fact that this has been going on for what? This is 2,000 years ago. This has been going on for a long time. This ain't a new game. This, this is the same old stuff. All right? And so when we see this, uh, we can recognize it. So now what's important is that when you see this back in Jesus' day, and then you see it today on the 6 o'clock news, you can be like, oh, okay, there it is. Why? Because you, you, you enlighten yourself to what was going on that Jesus had to deal with, that he came to fix. And you realize that we're still in that same murky water today. Lord, help to, what isolate me from that. Help me not to be affected by it. Uh, help me to be aware of it. And you thank God for at least allowing you to, to have the presence of mind to what? To identify I can see this mess. I, I know what's going on. And then you have something to do what? To pray for. Mm -hmm. You say, Lord, I, I'm going to pray for this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna. Then you know what else? Now before we, you know, we're going to pick on the politicians. But you know what else you see it in? You see it in yourself. Mm -hmm. Can we play pl political games our own personal selves? Or the, what? Mm -hmm. See, we, we can see. So then we begin to see it in ourselves. See, it ain't always just them. Them, 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 them. Sometimes it's also what me 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 me. I got issues. I got problems. I got things I got to deal with. So just like I need the Lord to help me to insulate against the stuff that I see around me, I also need the Lord to help insulate me against my own self. Lord, help me with the enemy in me. All right. And sometimes that can be my biggest problem because I may not always have to live with Trump, but I always got to live with me. Yeah. Amen. All right. So it's always a situation of being able to identify it regardless as to where it is. And sometimes it's as close as your own heart and mind and soul. And that's what we ask God to come and do what? Lift and cleanse us from. All right. Take us out of that. All right. So um, once Pilate saw this, he's like, okay, I'm done with this. I, I got a way out. I'm sending him to his original jurisdiction which is Galilee let Herod deal with this guy now Herod was from, from Galilee and because that's the area in which Jesus uh, had some popularity Herod had heard about Jesus he knew about him but Herod knew about him not in the sense in which you may try to understand Jesus Herod you may try to understand Jesus as uh, the Lord of Lords uh, the King of Kings Herod was seeing Jesus as entertainment. He was seeing Jesus as somebody that, that can come and can do something for me that can make me go ooh and ah and have a feeling and have an emotion. And Herod was looking at Jesus for what? Entertainment. Look at what he says here. It says, um, and seeing Jesus, Herod Re rejoice what exceedingly Herod was happy why for he was wishing for a long time to see him he always wanted to see Jesus because he heard many things about him he done heard about Jesus all that so far sounds pretty good right mm -hmm. wanted to see him I'm very happy can't wait to and he was hoping to see some sign done by him. Now let's analyze this. You got people that are excited and, ex and looking forward to, go to see Jesus. Been looking to see him for a long time. Heard many wonderful things about him. And looking for him to do a sign. Well, what, well what's wrong with that? Well, what's wrong with that is that you're looking at Jesus for the, for the wrong purpose. Because Jesus is not a circus act. Hmm. He's not a three ring you know, circus where you come in and you're going to get... 
Jesus is not a performance. This ain't Jesus is not Marvin Gaye and Tina Turner and, mm -hmm. and, 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 and Earth, Wind and Fire. That's not what Jesus is all about. He's not here for entertainment. And so we shouldn't turn the things of Jesus into entertainment. But have we? People are all excited because they're about to go get their, their spiritual what? Groove on, so to speak. Mm -hmm. All right. I can go down that road, but you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take a detour. I'm not even going to go down that road. <laughs> because it's too much of that. It's a lot of that. All Amen. right. Everybody's trying to see a sign. I want to see something wonderful. Jesus just becomes a little magic show. Mm -hmm. When in reality, we need to just be thanking God for all that he done and all that he did and all that he's going to do. Amen. And if you're looking for a sign, all you need to do is go, go look in the mirror because the fact that you are able to stand up and look in the mirror, that's the biggest sign you need to have. Mm -hmm. You've got the ability to be able to, to recognize that and, and, to, and to know that you have a God that loves you the way he would say that, 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 that he would send his only begotten son into the world so that, what, so that you can live? Mm -hmm. And that Jesus is going to do this so that you and and the Godhead, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit can spend eternity together. Mm -hmm. And then he's going to style our relationship as a relationship between a husband and a wife. He's going, he's going to call that which he calls out of the world, the church. He calls it his what? His bride. Mm -hmm. How blessed are you if you understand it and if you accept it? That you're going to be the bride of Christ mm -hmm. in relationship? That's closer than the angels. Amen. But that's what God wants. And so, you know, in, in a couple more months, we're about to get into the book of Genesis as we start. But you're going to see all that, that when God created all this. And I, I, you, you sit and you look at all of that and you begin to recognize that the Lord allowed all this to happen. So when it's all said and done, the Lord has a bride. Mm -hmm. All that happened. And he had a bride. And we're gonna, and when we go through the Old Testament, we're gonna look at all this stuff here. And sometimes we 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 wonder, well, you know, what was he doing, and why 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 would he even allow uh, uh, the devil in the garden? We'll mm -hmm. talk about that, you know, and all these different things. But it was the bottom line. What it was also that when it was all said and done, he's gonna pull out a, a pure and perfect what mate, a bride that will help govern with him. That's kind of deep. Amen. To think about that. Yeah. That that's where God wants you? By his side? Mm -hmm. Us that was made out of what? The, the dust God. of the earth? Right. Right. There's a lot to that. And I can't, you know, that's why I say it's going to take a while to bring all those points out. And I'm trying to bring some of them out now just by introducing that. But I think it's important to recognize the value that God sees in the relationship that he has with man. All right, sometimes we, we just we, we don't we don't see it the way he sees it. Because look at what he's allowing to happen to the sun. Mm -hmm. And this is just the beginning. We ain't got to the part yet where he's gonna turn his back and where he's gonna he's gonna smack him. Mm -hmm. The Bible said he smote him. Smote him. So this is just the beginning. Right now he's doing what? He's being what? Humiliated. We're gonna see that in a bit here now. All right. That embarrassment aspect of it. So, so Herod wanted to see Jesus. He'd been looking for him for a long time. He had many, and he, he, he was questioning him with many words. All right? He wanted to know all this different stuff. Tell me some wonderful stuff. Tell me this. What, you know, how things look in heaven. How is it? All these questions. But he said, and he did not answer him. Jesus does not, he did not waste his time with the foolishness of that uh, of, of that man's questions and a lot of times people will have an opportunity like we do we can go into the word we have today we can get into the word and and get to know the Lord but, but Herod didn't want to know God Herod mm -hmm. wanted to know tricks and and what can God do mm -hmm. can you make a rock so heavy that you can't lift it you know he wanted to know all kinds of little details but didn't want to know God I want to know what you can do, but I don't want to know you. And that's the problem, once again. Same old situation today. What can God do for me? Okay. But how about this? 
Why don't you get to know him? Why don't you just allow him to be your shepherd? Amen. Because if you allow him to be your shepherd, you will find out what he can do. But don't come and say, well, show me what you can do first, and then I'll make a decision. That's what Herod's is looking at. And I don't even think Herod's trying to make a decision. He just wants to see some, something wonderful. So when he decided, Jesus decided not even to give Herod an answer. He didn't open up his mouth. And the chief priests and the scribes, who? Chief, chief priests priest. and the scribes. Let me the underline religion. that again. These are the who? The religious, religious leaders. leaders. They're there. They're right there. The religious folks are going to follow Jesus wherever he goes. So now Jesus has left Pilate and he's come to Herod. And who's still there? Hollering and screaming, making accusations? The chief priests and the scribes. And you're going to see me continue to highlight that because I want to make sure that we understand that just because you have a religious aspect to you, that does not make you godly. And there's a lot of people that are, some of the meanest people in the world are people that talk about, they use a lot of, you know, biblical and God phrases. And they'll say that I'm a, I'm a church going person and can be one of the meanest people there is. I read the Bible. It can be mean, hateful. Just like these folks. All right? And that's why I highlight that so that we can make a difference. So that when we hear people on the radio and TV talking about how they love the Lord, get past what they say and what they label themselves at. Because the scripture says that many people will say that they are of the Lord. And even in the Revelations, it says that folks will say, I am, uh, they, they will call themselves Jews and what? Are not. Jehovah's Witnesses do that. They say that they, they are the 144,000. The 144,000, according to scripture, are 144,000 Jewish people. All right. all right, let me move on. I, I can stay on that all day. All right. And so he, they stood vehemently accusing him. All right, so they're just accusing him and humiliating him. Then Herod with his soldiers mocked him. So when Herod could, didn't get any tricks out of him, he began to do what? Mock him. Mock him. So I, I wanted you to entertain me, so I'm going to be entertained. I'm going to, I'm going to do all kinds of stuff to you that's, that I think is just fun. See what you do. Jesus is paying the price for sin. Look what he's doing. He's taking the humiliation. He's taking the mocking. Mm. See, today, imagine somebody embarrassing you. Oh. Putting you in a situation that embarrasses you. You, you you ready to fight now? Yeah, y'all might as well say because y'all might as well agree. I, you're ready to fight. Yeah. You gonna embarrass me? No, we gonna, no. It's gonna it's gonna be on. Mm -hmm. They used to say on like popcorn. <laughs> it's gonna happen because we don't like that, do we? Right. Nope. What did Jesus do? He allows them to vehemently accuse him, humiliate him, mock him. Putting gorgeous apparel on them. So they said, well, since you say you're a king, let us dress you up. But they're not dressing them up to make him look good. They're dressing them up to make him look like a buffoon. Mm -hmm. Mocking. Mm -hmm. Jesus didn't do that. Gorgeous apparel around him. And sent him back to Pilate. Look at that. Well, we didn't get what we wanted out of him. So we're going to send him back to Pilate. And both Pilate and Herod became friends with one another on that day. For before that, they were enemies between themselves. So at that particular time, those two um, government of, uh, officials were kind of at odds. And now they're what? They kind of joined together. So what got strengthened during the, the, the passing back between Jesus? It wasn't the bond of people to the God that was sent to redeem us. What got strengthened was the what? The political structure. Mm -hmm. Right? And you will find that you can have Democrats and Republicans that don't like each other, but you start bringing true Jesus style teachings, they will form together to go against you. what you're trying to do. Mm -hmm. All right? And we'll see that even more so as time goes forward. Um, and we'll point that out even more and more, especially when we get into the study of the kings and the judges uh, and when we go through the Old Testament. All right, so um, we see what's happening here. Now, uh, that, that whole uh, uh, 
little trick that Pilate was trying to use to get rid of Jesus and send him to Herod didn't work. Now Pilate is, is now standing before, I was to say now Jesus is again being sent back to who? To Pilate. Yeah. So now we're going to see Pilate declares Jesus innocent. Story 275. Let's take a lesson. Any other questions on 274 before we move on? All right, let's look at 275. Story 275. Pilate declares Jesus' innocence. And Pilate, calling together the chief priests and the rulers and the people, said to them, You brought this man to me as one misleading the people. And behold, I have examined him before you. And I have found no guilt in this man regarding those things that you bring forward against him. No, not even Herod, for he sent him back to us. And behold, nothing worthy of death was done by him. Therefore, I will chastise and release him. But at the feast, the governor was obliged to release for the crowd any one prisoner whom they wanted. And at that time, they were holding a notorious prisoner, the man called Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a robber. He was one who had been bound and thrown into prison with the insurrectionists, who had, for a certain insurrection, committed murder in the city. And therefore... When they were gathered together, the crowd went up and began asking him to do as he had been accustomed to do for them. And wanting to release Jesus, Pilate answered them, saying to them again, But you have a custom that I should release someone for you at the Passover. Whom therefore do you want me to release for you? Barabbas or Jesus, who is called Christ, the King of the Jews? For he knew that the chief priests had delivered him up because of envy. And while he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent to him, saying, Have nothing to do with that righteous man, for last night I suffered greatly in a dream because of him. But the chief priests and the elders excited the crowd to ask for him to release for them Barabbas instead, and to put Jesus to death. And the governor answered and said to them, Which of the two do you want me to release for you? Then again they all cried out all together, saying, not this man. Away with this man, and release for us Barabbas. And answering again, Pilate said to them, Then what will I do with him who is called Christ, whom you call the king of the Jews? They all kept calling out, saying to him, Let him be crucified. Crucify him. And Pilate the governor said to them the third time, Why? What evil has he done? I have found no guilt in him demanding death. Therefore, I will punish him and release him. But they were insistent with loud voices and kept shouting all the more, asking that he be crucified, saying, Let him be crucified. And their voices began to prevail. And Pilate, seeing that it profited nothing, but rather a riot was made, took water, and he washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent from the blood of this righteous one. You will see to it. And all the people answered and said, His blood is upon us and upon our children. And wishing to satisfy the crowd, Pilate pronounced a sentence that their demand should be granted. And Pilate released Barabbas to them, the man they were asking for, who had been thrown into prison for insurrection and murder. All right. That's a sad situation right there. Because what you once again see is what are you going to do with the truth you know? All right. You look at this story and in a nutshell you can see Pilate knew Jesus was innocent and he was a government official and he's, he was obliged as a government official to do what? Uphold what? The law. The law. And he was supposed to release him because he already came to the conclusion. When a judge says this man is innocent, what are you supposed to do? Release supposed to be released. Mm -hmm. But he's getting pressure from who? The crowd, the government. The crowd and, and the religious, religious, religious leaders. leaders. Mm -hmm. All right. Because they want him dead. And so when we look at this, and, and really, in a nutshell, that's what this whole story is, is, is about. The fact that you've given, you've been given, because see, no authority is given to anybody unless God allows it. Mm -hmm. So Pilate was, was in a 
position of authority. But now what are you going to do with your God-given authority? What you do with, with it is you're going to be held accountable. Mm -hmm. He was supposed to, listen, I don't care what y'all say. Y'all can. Yell, and he was concerned about what? Having a riot. Mm -hmm. The people getting all in the uproar. But he knew what was right. Mm -hmm. But he decided to do what was politically an advantage to him. I'm going to do what's politically right. So when we look at this, and we can skim through this, I think that's the gist of this, but you can see Pilate calling together the chief priests and the rulers and the people. All right? So he's getting all the, the, the folks together. All right? So you got the government, you got the religious leaders and the rulers, and then you got the people. The people represent what? That crowd. Remember? Mm -hmm. Before we crowd. even when we first started this book, I told you, watch the who? The, the crowd. crowd. Watch where they are. And in, and in the beginning, the crowd was all around who? Jesus. Jesus. Now look where the crowd is. Right? So when you follow in the crowd, you're going to follow whatever it is. The crowd goes the way, whatever the way the wind blows. Mm -hmm. But if you wanted to follow righteousness, you're going to follow Jesus. Mm -hmm. right? And you may not always be where the crowd is. And so um, he, he says, I've examined him and I have found no guilt in this man regarding those things that you have uh, brought before him uh, against him all right it says no not even Herod Herod didn't even find any guilt in him all right so nobody from the government saw any wrong in him like you said he should have been what released and he says notwithstand uh, he says uh, um, I found nothing worthy of death uh, by him. Therefore, now here's his first bending point. He just said the man was what? Innocent. Yes. He goes, now, he said, this is what I'm going to do. Therefore, I will what? I will chastise him and release him. Chastise him for what? Exactly. So there's the first crack in the arm. See, what, what, uh, what Pilate was hoping for was like, well, if I take him in the back and I beat him a little bit, maybe that'll be enough. Y'all feel okay about that. Mm -hmm. But that's not what they want. They want death. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. So even his, his so-called, he's playing a political game. Let me give him a little bit of what they want. Mm -hmm. That's what politicians do. Let me give you a little bit here, a little bit there, and see if I can get that to work. They're trying to find that comfort zone. There's no comfort zone here, and so it says. But the feast of the governor, uh, uh, but at the feast, the governor was obliged to release uh, for the crowd any one prisoner. So now, what's happening here is that Pilate is beginning to remember. You guys got a little, a little thing going on that we used to do. That every now and then, just to show some kindness around the Passover, I'll allow one of the prisoners to be what. Be released. Mm -hmm. So now what he's trying to do, he says, well, maybe I'll use that. I already got him as innocent, so maybe I'll use this little loophole that we have, and I can use that, and I can release him under that. That way I still don't have to say he's, he's innocent, but I still can let him go. So mm -hmm. Pilate's trying to use that. So, and it says that at the time, they were holding a, notor a notorious man. They got a guy that they, they know is uh, a bad egg. His name was Barabbas. Barabbas was a robber. He also was a what? A murderer. murderer. All right. All right. So he was in there under uh, insurrection. He was committing murder in the city. It says, and therefore, when they were gathered together, the crowd went up with a uh, with the uh, with a cry aloud and began to ask him to do as it had been a uh, a custom. And so they're looking for someone to be released. And they said, so who should we release? They're looking for, well, not, not Jesus, but what? Barabbas. Right. Mm -hmm. And so Pilate answered them, saying to them again, but, uh, but uh, you have a custom that I should release someone uh, for uh, you on this Passover. This is, this is the thing. Let me just release this guy for you on Passover. Whom, therefore, do you want me to release? And, that just, and Pilate was just hoping that they would say what? Jesus. Jesus. But they, and he says, Barabbas or Jesus, whom you call the Christ, the king of the Jews. For he knew the, the chief priests 
had, and this is important, had delivered him up because of what? Envy. So now, not only does Pilate, see Pilate's no dummy. Pilate knew he was innocent. Now, after dealing with them for a little bit, Pilate begins to understand, I even know why they got him up here. They're jealous of this guy. Because mm -hmm. see, they want religion to be about them. When the people are beginning to recognize that when you really have true religion, it's about who? Jesus. Jesus. See, that's what it really should be. Religion shouldn't be about Baptists or Methodists or, or, or Seventh-day Adventists or, or, or Episcopalian or anything. True religion should be only about who? Jesus. Jesus. But we make it about a whole lot of other stuff. You know, we got all these other different things that, that we put as high and important. So for, so it says, for he knew the chief priest had delivered him up because of envy. And while he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sat, uh, uh, sent to him saying, Have nothing to do with this righteous man. For last night I suffered greatly in a dream because of him. So, now, Pilate's in a situation where now God is dealing with him through his companion. His wife had a dream. And his, his wife, maybe not even trying to associate with the, uh, with the, the legality of what's going on, she just got truth. This guy that you're dealing with, I got in a dream. In other words, she felt that weird in her spirit, spirit, in her being. Leave this guy alone. Let them do what they do, but don't you be a part of it. You know, sometimes you got to do that mm -hmm. with, with certain things. You got uh, situations on your job or, or family members or whatever, and you just got to let them do what they do. I, I, I can't be a part of what you're doing. Amen. And this is what, the, what Pilate's wife was trying to get Pilate to do. And in Pilate's heart, he already knew Jesus was innocent. He knew the religious, religious leaders have him up there because of what? Envy. And now his wife comes to him. Pilate's got a lot of information to make a really good judgment. And he's not going to do it. He's not going to make a good judgment. He's going to cower down. Right? And so even us today, we get a lot of information. I know this is the right thing to do. You get other people that come and say things that may be not even aware of the details of your circumstances, but they give you information that you know applies to something you're dealing with. And here it is. So now I have to make a choice. Am I going to continue to understand and follow this guy, Jesus, or am I just going to cast him aside? You gotta make a choice. You gotta make a decision. What you gonna do? Mm. And so what a pilot does. It says, but the chief priests and the elders excited the crowd. Look at that. See where the crowd is. For him to release who? Barabbas instead. And to put Jesus to death. Mm. And the governor answered and said to them, Which of the two would you have me to release to you? And again. They all cried together saying, not this man, away with this man, and release for us Barabbas. Look at this. Mm. And answering again, Pilate said to them, then what should I do with him who is called Christ, whom you call king of the Jews? They all kept crying out, saying to him, let him be what? Crucified. All right. Now, let me, let me just say this. For what reason did Jesus come to earth? To die. He came to die. He, he came to, to show us the truth about what his death would do. So, is there any way that Jesus is not going to pay for our sins? He's going to pay for them. Yes. The, the issue is who is going to be a part of that Pilate could have taken himself out of that now and as we go further in we're going to see a, another situation with two people that, ha that have an opportunity to take themselves out of the equation the two thieves on the cross 
And one guy is going to incite and continue to do the humiliation, and another guy is going to take himself out of the process and declare Jesus innocent. But he has no authority to release Jesus. He's on the cross. But Jesus is going to tell him, because of what you just said, today you're going to be with me in paradise. Because he, took, he, he, he made the right choice. Pilate here with all this information and all this is still going to make the what? The wrong choice. He had an opportunity. He did not have, Jesus came to pay for sin and we know the wages of sin is what? Death. Yes. But Pilate did not have to be a part of it. The scripture tells us that a lot of people are going to be lost. They're not going to get to know Jesus. They're not, they are not going to be part of the bride of Christ. But that don't mean that you have to be Amen. the people that are not part. There are going to be people that are lost people that are going to be rejected but that don't mean that you have to be part of the rejected people Amen. you can choose to do what's right and not what's comfortable or what's popular or what society says we can embrace and do and accept and have because society is being fed information from who? the enemy, the enemy from the devil right? and it's all polished up and made look good and, and it's popular so it's not even a, a hassle. You know, you could just go along with the crowd. See? But you end up doing what? If, if, you don't, if you don't choose Jesus, guess what happens? You don't have him. Mm. So you don't get him by, by osmosis. You don't get him by default. You have to get Jesus by what? By choice. choice. Okay. In order to, to stay, uh, uh, to eat healthy, you have to do what? Choose to what? What you want to eat. What you want to eat. If you choose to do nothing, I'm not going to eat at all. Guess what's going to happen? You're going to be around. So doing nothing produces what? Nothing. <laughs> Ultimately, it produces what? Death. Death. <laughs> so you have to make a decision, even in your natural being, what to eat. But even when you do decide to eat, if you eat crackers and potato chips and, 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 and lollipops, and, well then you still, you may not die right now, but you still are what? Dying. Mm -hmm. But to choose to eat healthy, to choose to eat proper, will help produce and sustain a natural being. It's the same thing spiritual. You got to choose Jesus. You have to say, that's what I want. And then you have to practice doing that on a, what, daily, daily basis. And if you choose to do nothing, you will starve spiritually. Mm. I'm not, I don't want to deal with, I don't, some people say, I don't want to deal with none of this religious stuff. I don't want to deal with Jesus. I don't want to deal with Buddha. I don't want to deal with none of that. And that's fine. You, I can understand why people say that. But I'm going to tell you, if you choose to do that, you will starve to death spiritually. Amen. So you have to choose to take in spiritual food. I want to have the understanding as to what God is trying to get us to understand spiritually. And it's going to help me to develop. It's going to help me to grow. And the more you take in, the more you're able to absorb. Mm -hmm. See, there's a lot of... When you're eating bad food, you can't even absorb proper vitamins because you don't have the energy to do it. Nutrients and minerals and stuff that you could be utilizing your body is not breaking down properly. Because it's just trying to just, just have the basics of just life. But when you're eating well, now you're able to develop muscle. You're able to keep your, 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 your skin tone and your eyesight, you know, when, especially when you're young. You get old and you start wearing these spectacles. But, but you see what I'm saying? You keep getting all that good stuff going on, right? Mm -hmm. But when you're, when you're ill, you're not developing all the things that you could develop. Same thing spiritually. When you begin to accept Jesus and you start taking in, the more you take in, the more you are able to take in. You'll have more insight. You'll gain spiritual. So, and that's why it's, the Bible talks about the scripture as being alive. Because as you begin to absorb spiritual um, nutrients, and you'll take a passage in scripture that you've read 1,500 times, but now you're at a stage because you've been absorbing the things of Christ. You've been allowing the Spirit of God to work with you. And you read that same passage of Scripture. There are spiritual nutrients that will be passed through to you by reading that this time that you didn't get the last time. That's why the Scripture is said it's what? Alive. 
And that's why we should read it on a what? Daily, Daily basis. It's not something that you read once. It's not like, you know, reading the, reading the novel and saying, well, I read it. Not going to the movies and seeing the movie. Well, I saw that movie already. It's different than that. And if we don't recognize it, if we treat the Bible like any other ordinary book, then you're, you're not going to get the nutrients that are in there for you. Because see, you're going to need those nutrients today. Though you, you may have gone through it yesterday. All right? So it says, uh, and he says, I have found no guilt in him uh, demanding death. That's what, what Pilate is saying. Therefore, I will punish him. Look at him. He's, well, why are you punishing him again? And release him. But they were insistent with loud voices. Look at this. Uh, th there's like a little riot going on. Mm -hmm. And kept shouting all the more. Asking that he be what? Crucified. crucified. Saying let him be crucified. And their voices began to prevail. Mm -hmm. And Pilate seeing that it profited nothing. I'm not gaining anything from this. And I profit nothing. How? Politically. Mm -hmm. He's not getting it. It's, it's starting to go down for him politically. Mm -hmm. Folks going to hear about the day there was a riot in my province and, and, and you know, I'm the governor. They may try to replace me. <laughs> See, it'd be better for you to lose your, your place as governor than to lose your relationship with Jesus. Amen. See, it's better to have less and Jesus than to have everything and not have. Mm -hmm. Jesus said that himself. Yes, he did. What would a man uh, profit. profit if he gains the what? The, the whole, whole world, world and lose his soul. Lose his soul. Mm -hmm. So what you going to do with that? I got everything. Yeah, but you're going to hell. Like the man with the bigger barns. That's right. Hmm. So you don't want everything and be lost. Mm -hmm. I'd rather have mediocre. I'd rather struggle mm -hmm. knowing that I got Jesus and can struggle with joy and can be trying to balance my two nickels together with, 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 with the pleasure of knowing God mm -hmm. than to have millions in the bank and not know them. Mm -hmm. And somebody says, well, can I have millions in the bank and know them? Well, that's up to you and God. <laughs> But the reality of it is, I don't care what I have to go through, I want Jesus. I'm not turning Jesus away. Unfortunately, that's not what Pilate thought. Pilate was like, no, I'm, I'm going to keep my good job. Which is kind of sad, too, because when you get out of the Bible and go into history, Pilate still ended up losing his job. So he's going to lose it anyway. You see what I'm saying? Which is kind of sad. Now, he didn't keep his problems anyway. They came and take it from him because there were other things going on. All right. So, so Pilate, seeing that it profit nothing, but rather a riot was making, took water and he washed his hands before the crowd. He washed his hands in front of who? The crowd. The crowd. That crowd is something else, ain't it? Yeah. Saying, I am innocent from the blood of this uh, righteous one. Was he really innocent? No. Pilate was guilty. Who was innocent? Jesus. Jesus was innocent. He called, Pilate's calling himself innocent. When you are putting a person to death, that's all right, that you know is innocent. <laughs> so you know somebody's innocent and you're going to put them to death, but then you're going to call yourself innocent? No. All right. Uh, you will see to it. So he, now he's going to say, it's, it's, now he's passing the buck to who? To the crowd. The crowd. And all the people answered and said, the, his blood be upon us and upon our children. That's a bad thing to say. That's a bad thing to say. Because see, the one thing that you want to do is to pass truth to your children. <coughs> you know, you ever, you know, you, you sit there, you, you look at something, you say, yeah, when I, was a, when I was, you know, 14, 15, I did something that was really dumb. I'm going to try to get my kids, what, not to do what I did. Mm -hmm. When I went through school, I paid no attention. I'm trying to get my kids to do what? Pay attention. Mm -hmm. When I got in trouble, I, I, I started to fight. I'm trying to teach my kids to not be so, what, aggressive. aggressive. On, on a, so you try to, because you know. But, you know. All you can do is tell them. That's it. We try, like we were talking this, this earlier, early on. We're trying to tell kids, 
be grateful for what you got. Mm -hmm. Because we know what we what what we what we had to to deal with. Mm -hmm. And they don't yeah. they don't know because they look they think oh, well everybody had it like this. No. <laughs> no, 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 no. You get to change clothes every day. You know, you get to, you know, uh, get up and ain't got well, which, which shoes do I wear? Growing up, you didn't have but one pair. You had you had your good shoes, which mm -hmm. you could only wear one, you know, on, on certain days, mm -hmm. and then you had your everyday shoes. That was it. Mm -hmm. And if you was that's if you was really good. Mm -hmm. If you were fourth, you had a, you, you had a little money. You had two pairs of shoes, mm -hmm. right? But uh, you know, you had that one coat. That was it. That was your, that, I have a winter coat. Mm -hmm. When it's cold, that's the coat I put on. See, I remember those days. See? And you, you know, but now they weren't forever. I came out of it, and I got all the stuff that we got today. I, I in my uh, teenage years, I had all that good stuff too. I remember when I first got my my first pair of pro cash, ten dollars, man, for some sneakers. <laughs> ten dollars. That's it, man. Don't tell me nothing. That I got some pro cash on my feet. <laughs> Cost me, cost a whopping ten bucks. Wow. Mm. And if you was really rich, you got some Pumas. They cost twenty dollars. That's right. All right. I wish sneakers were twenty dollars. Oh no. Yeah. <laughs> like a hundred and twenty dollars. Yes, they are. Three hundred dollars. But you're trying to get people to do what? Appreciate, mm -hmm. understand the value. But sometimes it's hard to understand the value. It's hard to appreciate if you don't take a moment to. to to learn where it came from, how it, and so the crowd don't want to know about what Jesus is trying to do. They only focus on what they want now. I'm just focusing on what's happening here. I don't care about the history. I don't care about the future. I don't care. I just want what I want. What now? Yeah. And that makes you ignorant. Mm -hmm. Sad to say. Yes. If you don't realize why you should be grateful or for certain things, it's because you refuse to. To, to have the knowledge as to how much it costs to have. Mm -hmm. And we're going through now how much it costs to have eternal life. Yes. Eternal life is free, mm -hmm. but it is not cheap. Amen. It is the most expensive thing you could ever uh, uh, um, be in the presence of. Mm -hmm. Eternal life, mm -hmm. have part of your being, there is no greater gift. Mm -hmm. The most expensive, but yet free. The yeah. most elaborate, but yet free. free. You can't pay for it, but yet it's free. Mm -hmm. Eternal life given to us by the Lord. So, um, so the crowd says that, you know, put this on my children. So they're not even thinking about the future. Mm -hmm. they're, they're being ignorant in that statement. Mm -hmm. It's a sad statement. Yeah. And wishing to satisfy the crowd, Pilate pronounced a sentence that they de that, that they they demanded should be granted. So Pilate's going to allow him to be what? Crucified. And Pilate released Barabbas, and now he's going to release what? A murderer, murderer. and a robber. robber. They, he released Barabbas to them, and the man they were asking for, whom had uh, thrown into prison for insurrection and for murder. That's the man that they're going to release. Mm. Awesome. And the man that is innocent is going to be put to death. Okay. Now, Jesus being put to death, once again, let me emphasize this, is not the problem. Because he came to what? To die. The problem is the process. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Who's going to be part of the process? Mm -hmm. See, so, so uh, what the devil wants to see, there's going to be people, even when Jesus comes back, there are going to be people that are going to fight against God. The scripture says that they're going to be, in, in, uh, in Psalms 2, says that God looks and sees that people are, are willing to fight against Him. How can you form your mind once you understand that God is coming? To say, I'm willing to join the side that's going to fight against God. How do you do that? How do you get your mind to, 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 to come to that conclusion? But we do know that that's what's going to happen. They're not going to be confused and wonder, well, I wonder who we're fighting against. They, they, they will say, you know, you know hide us from, 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 
from him that, that created all. They, they, they acknowledge and, and, and say this is God. But yet they're going to fight against it. All right, so how do you form that? How do you get that into your mind? So um, when we went to the book of Revelation, we kind of pointed that out, that, uh, that uh, you're being trained now. That's you know, what Jesus said that, told Pilate, that I came to, be, to bear witness of the what? Of the truth. The truth. Well, the lies being pro propagated now. Because, see, if you draw the scenario like how they do in these books and in these movies, you look at it like this. Well, here comes this all-powerful thing. You know, y'all watch, watch the movies, the, the Avengers or whatever. You know, this the Thanos this kind of type of guy. This all-powerful being is coming. He's taking over our planet. This is our planet. We're going to defend our planet. And we're going to fight against this, this God. Even though he might have been here before us. And even though he was the creator, we own it now. So you see the 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 the, the, the jargon and the, and the and the conversation that will be going on, but it's all not. It's all what? It's, it's not. It's not true. All right? Because he's not coming to destroy. He's coming to give life. All right? But in doing so, guess what has to happen? There has to be a death, mm -hmm. and that has been shown us throughout all ages. Nothing can live without a death. Everything that you eat to stay alive was once what? Alive. Right. Eat something that was never alive. Go eat some sand. Sand was never alive, to my knowledge. Mm -hmm. How much are you going to survive off of sand? Mm -hmm. right. go, on, go on out there and eat some rocks. Mm -hmm. right. Rocks was never alive. Mm -hmm. Go get you some, some, some just, you know, the, the, some iron. Some iron. <laughs> Any of that stuff. All right. But you do need fish, fish was once like plants, mm -hmm. everything that we deal with. And that has been woven through all of society as a sign to us. That's exactly how Jesus is going to bring us from natural death to spiritual life. By allowing a death to take place. And his death is going to bring us what? Life. So him going through this process of being... Uh, push through this political aspect of being sentenced to death is not a surprise for him. Remember, in the Garden of, of, of Gethsemane, he said, Father, if there's any other way, let it happen. But if there isn't any way, I'm willing to drink the cup. Mm -hmm. So he knew that this was, this is what he came to do. He's going to pay for our sin. He's, he's got enough money to pay and to get all the groceries out. To, he can take us all out. But are you in the cart? Or you left in the supermarket? Did you get into the cart and allow him to bring us through? So I want the Lord to bring me through. I want him to bring us through. But we have to be willing to be part of what he's doing. And to be part of what he's teaching. Not what other people are teaching about him. Or all this, you know, you see people talking about all these other stuff that uh, I ain't got time to get into it. But it's just bad teaching. And bad, and, and bad philosophy that God wants you super rich and they walking around here talking about I, God told me to tell y'all I need a second jet. You need another do you need another jet? No. Alright, well I'm gonna stop because we're not done. Next week we will pick up on Jesus is scourged and mocked. And uh, we're gonna see the Bible tells says that uh, by his stripes we are what? Healed. We'll talk about that on next week. Any other comments or questions?